Hey guys, uh, good morning. Hope everybody's doing great day on this uh, Monday morning. This is Coach Bill with uh, Fat Loss Made Easy. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, this video obviously, the title shows that I'm gonna be doing my weekly update on what Emily and I are doing for these next uh, probably three weeks. So just a quick review. Um, I have two workout programs I work with. I have workout one, which is six days a week. We do um, two body parts uh, twice a week. And then I have a second workout that I've been doing for, geez, I bet you over 30 years. And it's also a type of interval uh, strength training routine. The only difference is I'm only doing uh, weights on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, but I'm doing interval resistance strength training and I'm doing a max set on each of my larger muscle body parts. So bicep, triceps, I do max sets. Chest and back, I do max sets. And legs, I do max sets. Shoulders, um, I really don't do any max sets on those. And the reason for that is, is because um, obviously I'm older, but I don't want to get injured. But I'm still doing interval resistance training on my shoulders too. But for these next three weeks, we're gonna, we've are gonna we switched over to um, our uh, workout two, which is strength training uh, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I do moderate cardio for uh, heart health on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, which is 20 minutes of either outside cardio or, well, I, if I do outside cardio, obviously it's longer than 20 minutes, but if I'm doing in the gym cardio, no longer than 20 minutes, and it's gonna be moderately. I'm not looking to lose weight doing the cardio. All I'm looking for is good heart health. Uh, I'm get, I get plenty of cardio doing the uh, interval resistance training Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays with those max sets. Um, I normally get my heart rate up to 85% toward the, especially close to the max sets. And on my max sets, we're doing reps of eight or of six, and we're pretty much at 85 and 94% of our um, our max on those exercises. So we're getting a lot of, uh, our heart rate is, is screaming by the time we're doing our toward the end of the exercise. But what I'm doing these next three weeks, uh, what I'm planning to do these next three weeks, um, I started last week with this uh, workout routine and now I've, uh, I have noticed that when I'm coming off my six days a week workout routine, and then switching over to the three days, I'm really, we're both really strong. Uh, for example, today's, uh, today is my shoulder day and my leg day. And my shoulders, I, I actually, uh, the next time I work my shoulders out, which will be on, on Friday, I'm going to be, uh, I had to increase my weights on some of my shoulder exercises, especially my uh, shoulder press. So this week we're doing um, Monday's shoulders and legs, and then Wednesday is going to be upper body, and Friday is going to be uh, shoulders and legs again. And then the following week, I switch it over back to upper body on Monday and Friday, and then shoulders and legs on Wednesday. You'll see how I, I alternate it every other week. The difference this time, though, guys, is on my fasting days, which you guys know I do alternate day fasting. Uh, that's our life lifestyle that works great for us but on my two days and thursdays i normally do like a 23 hour fast and then on saturday i normally do a 20 hour fast well this next three weeks what i'm looking to do and i actually started last thursday um, on tuesdays and thursdays i'm actually going to go all the way to 40 hours and i'm doing that for a reason um Obviously, the most important reason, it's a way for my body to naturally detox itself of the environmental toxins that we're exposed to every single day. It's also shown by science, uh, USC, the University of California, actually published a scientific uh, case study showing that uh, fasting longer than 20 hours and getting our and fasting longer than 20 hours and even longer than 24 hours you're going to put your body into an environment that is, that is called uh, therapeutic autophagy uh, therapeutic autophagy when you get into that environment you're actually going to start producing your own new 
not only your mu new muscle stem cells, but you're also going to be producing um, immune stem cells. And that's what USC found. And so with the, with the issue with this COVID-19 and, and uh, the high, with, you know, and the hybrid flus that are fly, uh, flying around, um, I just feel that for my age and because of the post uh, medical issues I had in the past, that I want to go ahead and, and do a 40 hour fast on Tuesday and a 40 hour fast on Thursday and uh, get myself in therapeutic autophagy twice a week. And I want to see what's going to happen with my strength and my, I know it's going to happen with my uh, body fat. I'm going to I'm going to lose fat. I just want to see what's going to happen with my uh, lifting, especially my recovering. And so I have a, I have a feeling guys that the 40 hour fast on Tuesdays and Thursdays um, might be really beneficial for me because of my age and also keeping my growth hormones spiked most of the day throughout the whole day. Um, that's one thing therapeutic autophagy does. It actually helps to uh, elevate your muscle building hormones, especially your growth hormones. Now, of course, <laughs> it might just uh, it might just activate it or actually accelerate uh, slowing pre premature aging down because uh, when you've lost a lot of weight, you all know that you're going to get saggy skin, especially if you're older. And uh, one of the science, or, or one of the, uh, or there's there's a quite a bit of good science literature or journals, or even case studies that are showing that when you put yourself in therapeutic autophagy, your actually body is actually going in and tightening up saggy skin. Now, that doesn't happen overnight. That takes a long time to go. So, I've noticed myself because I was, I, I've got, I've had a lot, I've got a lot of saggy skin around my uh, ab area it is starting to tighten up a little more, even though I'm at a older age. And so that's what Emily and I are doing. Uh, she's following me. She, she's been following me for over 40 odd years. So no change there. So um, I'll just get, I'll keep you guys updated on our progress. I'm going to tell you exactly what's going to happen. Uh, like I said, the biggest thing I'm looking for is my recovery time after the gym because right now the, our program that we're set up on, um, we never get sore. And uh, by the time we walk out of the gym, we're fully recovered. Uh, my meals are all going to stay the same. Uh, like today uh, is a, is a non-fasting day. Uh, I'm going to consume more calories, to, uh, calories today. I bumped up my protein a little bit more. Uh, my fats will probably stay around 65% of my calories. And um, tomorrow, when, uh, one thing I am doing different, and I started last Thursday, I wanted to try it, where I did a 40-hour fast on Thursday. I broke my fast around 9 o'clock with a lean protein drink, which means that uh, it, uh, I use, uh, we make our own homemade kefir. I use a half a cup of that and I put in a, a half a cup of almond milk for a full cup uh, of that or a half a cup of almond milk. I use chia seed. We make our own homemade organic uh, yogurt. I do a uh, vanilla protein, bone, a bone broth protein powder and I do a uh, plain um, collagen protein powder. And then, uh, what else? and I put a tablespoon of uh, organic olive oil in there also, and that's it. And that's my lean. That's how I break my my long fasting. I I, I haven't been doing bone broth because I need a little more protein when I break my uh, my fast. And so I broke my fast at at around nine, and I waited till uh, ten thirty or eleven to work out. You know, because Emily and I are so fat adapted that uh, we digest our food very fast. Plus, I follow up all my meals by doing kombucha. We make our own homemade, homemade kombucha. And that's a very, very natural, live uh, digestive enzymes to help digest whatever foods we do eat. I do, that I do that after every main meal. And so I went to the gym, worked out Friday around 10.30 and ha normally I do not like to eat anything before I lift, but uh, I, I did on Friday and I felt fine, actually. Uh, I didn't feel bloated, I didn't feel stuffed. 
I actually felt fine and I was still, um, had still plenty of energy to work out and finish my workout. So I'm going to do that for the next two weeks. I'm going to go ahead and uh, on my non-fasting days, I'll break my fast around uh, nine o'clock, which will give me my 40 hours and then uh, work out two hours later just to make sure all the food's digested because you want to work out in the fastest state anyway that's you're going to get the best re results and especially and then when, and when you're fat adapted and ketone adapted like emily and i are um most likely all that food is gone so i'm right back into well you know what it, it, it is gone because we checked our glucose levels and our ketone levels uh before and found that our glucose stayed at 74 and my ketones, you know, my ketones now will never go over 0.8 or 0.9, never, because we're so ketone adapted. But I had ketones, so that just shows that um, I was in fat burning. And so that's where I want to be when I'm actually exercising. Okay, so I'll keep you guys updated. Hope you guys have a great day. Have a good one. We'll see you later.